Hello and welcome to ATV News. I'm Charity Pepzani with your top stories this evening. Julius Malema, the former South African ANC Youth League leader, is expected to arrive in Zimbabwe today. During his visit, Mr. Malema will also attend the wedding of Tendai Monika, a member of ZANU-PF. Malama will be accompanied in Zimbabwe by his spokesman Floyd Shivambu and suspended Youth League Secretary General Sandisa Magaka. In Zambia, a suspect has been detained in connection with the Colum coal mine case, which left a Chinese mine supervisor dead. Police in Sinazongwe have arrested, have arrested the murder suspect linked to the killing of Wun Shanghai on August 4th during a riot. Southern Police Chief Charity Katanga confirmed that the police had arrested Sylvester Siachibani of Siabajeli village. Two dangerous prisoners have fled from Zomba, a Malawian maximum security prison. Fiza Mwachande and Levi Manganga escaped from the Zomba facility. Their escape has caused panic among the public as they are considered to be hardcore criminals. It is currently unclear as to how the prisoners managed to avoid top security measures and guards. Legislators in Harare were this week embarrassed when they were barred from checking in at the Crown Plaza Hotel and Holiday Inn due to nine payments of their accommodation bills by Parliament. The MPs were left red-faced when they arrived and were told they could not be checked in despite their bookings because the hotels were trying to recover outstanding food and accommodation expenses from the legislature. In entertainment, Nigerian stars P-Square were given a kingly welcome by screaming fans at Harare Airport. The two brothers, Peter and Paul Okonye, are signed to Akon's label Convict Music. They'll be hosting their gig on Saturday at the Glamis Arena called Raise the Vibes. The jewel are set to be one of Africa's biggest musical export and their number one song, Chop My Money, featuring Akon, has been a great success around the world with over 10 million views on YouTube. Let's take a look at the video now. Now with the big weekend of international football coming up, our soccer specialist Liam and Michael are here to discuss the action. Thank you Charity and welcome to a special soccer session here on ATV because the English Premier League has taken a two week break and we're going to focus on the international matches being played this weekend and specifically as nations across Africa prepare for the final round of qualifying games to get to next year's African Cup of Nations in South Africa. Now, firstly, we've got the holders, Zambia. They, of course, won the tournament last year, and they take a 1-0 lead into their second leg of their game against Uganda on Saturday. But the Chipolopolo, as they're known, are without some key players, including Rainford Kalaba and striker Jacob Malenga. Now, Michael, you're here as usual. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. And they're some quite key players for Zambia. Um, how will they cope with that? Well, firstly, Zambia have enough uh, strength and depth to cope with the loss of such players. Other players have also come in, but uh, it's, it's going to be a really tough match for them. Uh, no team, the last time that Uganda lost in the stadium of Nambolo was in 2005. That was a match they played against South Africa, I think. And uh, Uganda has history on its side as well, because in 1976, it overturned a 2-1 deficit to win 3 nil in uh, Kampala. So it's really going to be a tough one for Zambia. I do certainly hope they pull through. And if they do, of course, they won the whole tournament last year. And that was quite a surprise, wasn't it? What are their chances of doing it again? They, they played well. Uh, they won the tournament because Zambia played as a team. And uh, the, the key players for them perform to the best of their abilities, so I do hope they can pull, pull it again. OK, well, we'll see what happens there. Now, Mali captain Seydou Keita is also out with injury, as well as striker Mustafa Yatabare and defender Adama Tambora. But they've travelled to their game against Botswana already with a 3-0 lead, so it's hard to see, even with those injuries, a way back into this for Botswana. Mike, can Botswana be believing in miracles? 
Well, the coach thinks it's going to be third time lucky for them this time, but uh, honestly, I don't see them pulling back because they've already lost twice to Mali. Even with Mali, there was too much quality in the team for them to lose against Botswana. Even without the likes of Keita? Yeah, even without the likes of Keita, because you, you, you get other players who play on a regular basis for the national team with Keita in there. So the more you play with quality players as well, that bit rubs onto you. Whereas if you look at the Botswana squad, who do they have really? And Mali, if they do progress to the, to the finals, um, they'll have Keita back. I mean, they've got a history of good players, Freddie Canute. Are they a, are they a real threat for the actual tournament? African football has progressed a lot. We will have to see, but they're, they're, they're one of the teams that are just right about up there, but not yet there, like the same level that Zambia was at, whereby it was just about there, but not yet there until it just made the final leap. And for a country like Botswana, we mentioned very small country, they've, yes. not, got a, they've not got a strong team. Should, could, should they just be happy with how far they've come to this day? They should be proud. They've done really well and uh, losing to a team like Mali, uh, you can't blame yourself for that. But uh, all they have to do now is play their best. They've got nothing to lose. They're already 3 nil down. So if they can attack, attack and try and get a goal or two, maybe, maybe it will be third time lucky. But I don't see that. OK, well, it seems unlikely, but let's hope for a miracle for Botswana. It'll certainly be an interesting match. Now, Zimbabwe travel to Angola on Sunday. The Warriors side take a 3-1 lead with them to Angola and they must be favourites to progress to the finals in South Africa. But just in case they were lacking any extra motivation, the Zimbabwe government has promised to give each player 10,000 US dollars and uh, also some property in the form of a residential stand worth $25,000 each. Now, they're unconf unconfirmed reports, but if that's true, I mean, they've got to win. If they're going to get all that, haven't they, Mike? <laughs> yeah, they've, they've got to win because uh, right about now I wish I was in the team as well. <laughs> yeah, but... Well, the squad's uh, not been confirmed yet, so maybe you can... <laughs> uh, well, the, I can't see myself getting any better than Knowledge Musona or Ezra Mnyandoro, who's the standing captain. Those are pretty good players and uh, them going into the match with a 3-1 lead, lead I do hope they certainly win there, but it's going to be tough. Angola has always been a tricky fixture for us. 3-1 though, it's quite a commanding lead. Something would have to go quite badly wrong for them not to progress, wouldn't it? Yeah, well 3-1, when you go into a match and you've got a 3-1 lead, you're, you always have this uh, uh, part of you is complacent. You think, oh, we're already 3-1. But when the other team scores, it becomes 3-2. Then it scores again, it becomes 3-3. Three, three. Then you get worried. Then you get worried because then other rules kick in, like the away goals rule and stuff. So at the moment, it's, it's more like all Angola needs to do is win 2-0. And uh, all Zimbabwe needs to do is either draw or win 1-0. But some people say that it's dangerous to sit back and you know, try and go for the draw. They might be safest going straight for the win on the attack. It's, 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 they'll have plenty of opportunities to score because Angola will obviously go out and try and win the match. So it's during that process that uh, I certainly hope my team will be able to win. Well, I certainly hope Zimbabwe get the win as well because otherwise Mr Mambo here will be moping around the ATV office on Monday. So good luck to the Warriors. Now moving away from Africa and many teams in Europe continue their qualifying campaign for the Rio 2014 World Cup. And, uh, of course, England have Mr Rooney as their captain. Wayne Rooney recently announced that he, he has to have another child with his wife, Colleen, and it caps a great week that he will be captaining the side against San Marino tonight. Now, San Marino are the joint worst team in the world, so we have to predict big goals for England. But uh, the real question is, how many goals can England get tonight, Mike? Uh, well, England usually disappoint when they're playing small teams, ex especially if it's the worst team ever. Uh, but I do hope uh, they give uh, supporters a much-needed uh, entertainment. They score loads and loads of goals and uh, look forward to seeing Chamberlain maybe getting a hat-trick. 
you always manage to slot an Arsenal <laughs> player in there, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I have to support my team there, but it's, it's a national thing. I hope they, they gel well as a squad. Well, the interesting thing is Frank Lampard is injured, uh, Steven Gerrard is out as well, that's why Rooney's captain, but surely this gives a good chance for youngsters, like you mentioned, Chamberlain, and, and a lot of people think that's where England need to, to really improve, is get their youngsters into the squad. Yeah, you, it, they should uh, blend the youngsters and uh, the more experienced players like Rooney, though he's, he's more or less in the youngster stage, well, he's not a youngster per se, but because he's been there for some time, people forget his age. And if you look at Lampard and Gerrard, these are players who are past their best. And uh, will they be there 2014? Will they be there 2016? Those kind of things. So. The coach really needs to look at these type of matches and see whether he can play as many youngsters as possible for the future. Now, a question back to Rooney is a lot of people think his behaviour in the past, you know, his suspensions, off the field antics, he's not really captain material. How do you feel about that? Well, on, on the pitch he carries himself as a captain. Well, I do realise nowadays you have to be conscious about your image out, outside as well. but. Uh, as a young lad, you make mistakes here and there, but as long as at the end of the day he plays well for the team and he brings in 100%, obviously for the coach to make him captain means he has a lot of confidence in Rooney and uh, Rooney has shown on the number of occasions that he's been captain for United that he actually plays better. That's very true. Um, well, he's certainly a world-class player and with the other range of players England have got, it's hard to see anything but a goal fest tonight. But as Michael says, beware the disappointing England side. Now, we'll be back on Monday to pick over all the action over the weekend and see how, how we gauge things and if Michael was right about, well, Zimbabwe getting the win that they need and that we need for him to, to stay positive. So join us then and uh, we'll look over the action. Mm -hmm. It's our picture of the daytime and our favourite photo today is of Chicharito, Prince TK. Don't forget to send us your pictures in over the weekend and you could be on TV on Monday. Thanks for watching and have a pleasant evening.